It's Professor Dave. Let's take some measurements. He knows a lot about the science stuff. Professor Dave explains. We just talked about a few of the observations of the night sky that must have happened in every civilization throughout the world at the dawn of human history. But science is much more than just observation. It is about what we do with these observations. We look for explanations. We make models and predictions. We take measurements and see how they hold up to our predictions. If they don't match, we revise the model and try again. After many centuries of pure observation, our approach to astronomy became more mathematical. Some of the earliest known scientific calculations happened during the classical period of astronomy in ancient Greece and other contemporaneous civilizations. What were some of these calculations, and what did they tell us? First came the realization that the Earth is round. This idea first cropped up around the time of Pythagoras, although at that time it was not really based on logic, but rather on the aesthetic beauty and perfection of the sphere. So it wasn't very scientific. But just a bit later, with Aristotle, a more logical approach arose. He noticed that during a lunar eclipse, the shadow cast on the moon by the Earth has a curved edge. This is representative of Earth's spherical shape. It was also realized that the stars that are visible in the night sky depended entirely on one's location in the world. Moving north to south, a completely new set of stars becomes visible, and all the familiar ones vanish from sight. This is easily explained with a round Earth, as the other half of space that surrounds the Earth is only visible to the other half of the Earth. Once it was determined that the Earth is spherical, the next logical step was to attempt to measure the dimensions of the sphere. Eratosthenes was the first to do this, and with impressive accuracy. He reasoned that when the sun is directly overhead one object, it must cast a shadow on some other object sufficiently far away. He used a well in one part of Egypt and an obelisk in another part of Egypt to take some measurements. At noon on the summer solstice, the sun shone directly down the well, illuminating the very bottom. Simultaneously, the sun cast a shadow on the obelisk in Alexandria, revealing that the sun was seven degrees off the vertical. Now let's draw a line from the bottom of the well to the center of the earth, and another one back up to the base of the obelisk. By simple geometry, we can see that the angle of this sector is 7 degrees, which means that this distance represents a little less than a 50th of the way around the world. The distance between these locations was known to be 5,000 stadia, so we can use a simple ratio to deduce that the circumference is around 250,000 stadia, which is around 25,000 miles. Given that in ancient times the only tool available was the naked eye, these are all demonstrations that you can reproduce yourself, in case you're curious to try. Now that we are all set with the Earth, what about the distances to other objects in the sky? And how big are those? Incredibly, we were able to deduce some of these quantities as well. Take the moon, for example. Around the time of Eratosthenes, another Greek named Aristarchus did some similar work. He looked at the shadow of the Earth on the moon during a lunar eclipse, and by comparing the curvature of the shadow and the moon itself, he deduced that the moon must have a diameter around one-third that of Earth. He also made estimates regarding the relative distances to the moon and sun, and although those were not as correct as his other work, he was the first to suggest that the sun is much larger than the earth, and even proposed that the earth goes around the sun. There was not sufficient evidence for this idea at the time, so the geocentric model with the rotating celestial sphere reigned supreme for many more centuries. Eventually, we did correct this oversight, and as this was one of the defining paradigm shifts in the history of astronomy, let's move forward and talk about that next. 
Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.